um, sequence to our table. We'll call now Professor Z Zumira Lacava, who will talk about the importance and challenges of nanotechnology. She's a, she is a director of nano science and nano biotechnicals and coordinator of the PDI post PhD in nanotechnology. She's a biologist and masters in molecular uh, biology, postdoctorate in the Northwestern University in Chicago and USP in Sao Paulo. She has a formation in genetic area mutagenesis. She emphasizes the clinical tests, biodistribution in vitro, and applica biomedical applications, uh, photodynamic magnotherapy, and all the magnetical materials. She's responsible for uh, clinical tests with photodynamics and she has worked in collaboration with uh, Brazilian c collaborators and European as well. <clears throat> I thank the organizers of this event to talk about uh, this work and also for the opportunity of knowing other works in other speaks that we have uh, listen to here. I'm going to talk more in a general way. I'm not going to uh, talk um, in details. I'm going to talk about the importance of nanotechnology, of nanotoxicology, and the challenges that we have ahead of us. <coughs> nanotechnology, as has been uh, said in many of the speeches here, uh, we it, it has a big, uh, ample uh, growth. It goes from medicine to uh, technology, informa information, science and materials, water, food, and environment, instrumentalization also. In nanobiotechnology, we have various, uh, we, we have uh, the, the system of drug delivery and especially in the cancer treatment, and, but they are extremely toxic. They have enormous side effects that can introduce a new kind of cancer in the patient. So develop, to develop this system of drug delivery is one of the uh, most, the, the approaches that are most important in nanotechnology. We have also seen in, during these days that the systems of, the, of nanostructured involve multiple forms ever, uh, from liposomes, microparticles, dendrimers, nano emulsion polymers, nanocapsules. Uh, as an example of what we have seen with in collaboration with Professor Tedesco, who yesterday gave his speech here, is a, a system of drug delivery for the treatment of PPM mycos, PB mycos, that affects the lower class poor population in that live in the tropics. And there is an excellent treatment made with Futuricina B, and it is a very toxic drug. The patient to be uh, treated with this illness, he has to be uh, interned six months having uh, a daily injection, and this Amphotricina B is very toxic for, for the liver, and what the people who are who have this, can have this uh, disease are in the tropical uh, parts of the world. The industries are not interested in developing this kind of uh, medicine. They developed one with libosomes, which is extremely uh, expensive, and the government will not give this to the population. So we have developed with Pro Professor did. The, nano capsules that could uh, deliver the anphotericin B. Here we see the effects of this nano capsule. Uh, 
this was based on previous studies that sh showed that the DNS takes uh, the nanoparticles professionally preferably to the lung, as this illness affects the lung firstly, uh, and it l looks very much like the TB, uh, we make this uh, nanocapsules with uh, the substance, and the destiny is pr preferably of, to, of the nanocapsules to the lung. Here you can have an idea of 30 days of treatment uh, that was happening with mice that had the PB mycosis and uh, <coughs> exactly this one on the left that was uh, had been treated with the nano ca capsules in a state in a much better health state. All the drugs, the amphotericine free amphotericine that is used uh, on the right, it it uh, healed the it uh, healed the the mouse, but it he was in a terrible state in the end uh, because of its toxicity. So here here on the top right, showing that the clinical effects were not very intense. They d they didn't lose weight, the animals. And here, in the other graphs, they showed that it wasn't possible to collect uh, the fungus of this, these treated animals. So this is the example of the importance of the delivery drug system. We uh, can consider these, consider, uh, these systems as real bombs, they have multiple functions. They can uh, localize a specific cell, uh, like in cancer, treat only those cells and leaving the others intact, <coughs> and recognize and a diagnosis and localize what cells have cancers and uh, make a re um, controlled release of the drug. And in our group, we are interested uh, particularly in magnetic nanoparticulars in those in the system of drug delivery. These magnetic nanoparticles have ca very interesting characteristics. When uh, placed in a liquid, all the liquid uh, behaves magnetically and can be attracted to a determined region using a magnetic field gradient they um, they they function as small magnets and they cannot be they we as a co coverage we can use a molecule as DMS that can be sent to the lung if they are coated with this trena, they will have uh, another destiny, like in the liver, and so on. <laughs> to give an example here, and uh, when we're talking about environment, in the network we made a composite with vermiculite that was, uh, we, we treated it chemi chemically for it to become hydrophobic, and we included m magnetic nanoparticles. Yeah, the ver vermiculite magnetic was deposited over, and in, in for a few seconds, it attracts all the oil, petroleum that was there, and which can be uh, removed with a magnet. So this material can be extracted, this petroleum, this oil, and also re as a petroleum. And also the com composite can be re -utilized, re utilized 13 times. So when we see the big di uh, environmental disasters, we can imagine that this could already be in use. But going back to the biological, biomedical part, these nanoparticle, magnetic nanoparticle, they have a very interesting property that they can be used to uh, 
they they can be directions to the to the target in th through three ways, different words. One, through a magnet gradient. Another is uh, covering these uh, magnetics with monoclonal um, for the kind of cancers. And another one with a membrane receptor, for example, if you uh, recover them with DMS, <coughs> they go to the lung. Once uh, you you go to the target, the par magnetic nanoparticles, uh, they they have to they need uh, special equipment to be done. So in w uh, in our uh, where we work, a doctor, a pharmaceutical doctor, she made this equipment that produces this with uh, alternate frequency and. Uh, there will be an increase in the temperature, spe specifically in the site where the nanoparticles are, taking to the uh, cellular breaking uh, by neptose or aptitose. This uh, heat has to be controlled. It cannot pass 7 or 8 degrees centigrade. But depending on the conditions in which this equipment is posed, you can increase the temperature up to 70 degrees. You will have an abrasion. You will not have an hypothermia. <coughs> we have had many samples and results with this hypothermia, and I'm going to talk a little bit more of them. To make this, all these applications, biomedical applications with the nanostructures in a general form, we have a, a condition that they should be biocompatible. And to show this, we have the tests, uh, nanotoxicological tests. And this was m my work in the last two, 12 years. Our group has invested in a collection of tests that can. Uh, say if this uh, material is or is not biocompatible. So we began with uh, tests in vitro with normal cells and tumoral cells corresponding, uh, cor correspondent preferably, and we made a, a feasibility tests with phagocytosis in morphology uh, in with optic and electrotic tests of genotoxicity, tests, tests with coloration dyeing to see if the, the apoptose or necrosis is being used. Uh, and apart from that, we work with a big uh, group of physics. So we also apply uh, tech Techniques in techniques in physics, and so Hamantra, um, MRI. MRI, and how many particles are being located around the particles, and this will depend on the interaction with the cells. And oh, very relevant are the tests in vivo that are made in my normal mice or uh, th those that are tumor carriers. So the feasibility tests are important, phagocytosis. We give a special attention to the acetometric in, uh, in blood cells and tests of micronucleus that is also of genotoxicity. The, morph the morphology uh, goes from the optic to electronic and also the at of atomic force when necessary. And also, when we observe, we make the biochemical cytogenetics and immunologicals, and also with physics um, techniques with the study of interactions of n nanoparticles with the blood cells. What is important is that uh, with more than 20 samples that we have studied, we do this with uh, different doses that uh, remembering always that any material can be done with, uh, with the medicine and 
or uh, we used two uh, ways of administration intravenous and peritoneal and the the, the time of application are short of three months for us to get the animal in a chronic phase. So this study is very intense. So in, but based on these tests, we can make a question. What is the importance of nanotoxology? Uh, here, just to show some examples, we uh, the uh, chemical n n nature of the core of the nanoparticles. So here uh, we see cores of different compositions in uh, sp um, based on manganese, manganese and ferrite, and with um, different um, with the covering and with effects that are very different uh, from t very reduced tex t toxicity until effects like death and uh, intestine disturbs and genotoxicity. So the n chemical nature is very important. At the same way, we can use the same core and use um, um, coverage that is different. So then we'll see the elimination of the bioparticles and so to and the promotion of the biocompatibility and the stability of the sample. With the same comments we could do uh, according to the size of the nanoparticles that could be interesting uh, taking the same core, the same coverage uh, when we go from sizes five and a half, eight and a half, and 15, uh, we're going to, we think, will there be a difference in toxicity? Yes, there will be. The best will be of eight and a half, five, uh, uh, 15, still not so toxic, but uh, in that sample that I commented with you of the nanocapsules of anphotrixine, we made it also magnetic to be e used for magnetic hyperthermic to uh, take them to the target uh, like the liver or the lung. And we made tests comparing it with the nanotrixin B3 and some results were uh, interesting. The stress with anphotrixine is big, but with the nano capsule, it's smaller. After 72 days, we uh, started to observe hepatotoxicity with the anphotrysin B free that we did not see with the uh, nano cap magnetic nano capsule. The feasibility of the uh, peritoneal cells was uh, compromised even after 80 days, in with in and with the nano capsule, it was observed small until 15 days. In the biodistribution bio inflammation, we saw that only with the free amphotrysin, we saw that in the liver, uh, spleen, and kidney. This is interesting because we saw this, the effects normally of, of the nanotoxic nanoparticles only with one or two uh, administration. Here we use 22 uh, administrations. Every three days we administered this uh, nanoparticles and making a, making a review, uh, seeing that the, the chemical nature, the size and the, the type of uh, covering will see how the interaction between the nanoparticles and cells will influence the, its efficiency. And we can also say that the set of methodologies can serve as a protocol in which we will use uh, to assess the nano samples produced, the procedures uh, it, itself, 
the, the sample is not toxic, but sometimes the procedure that you use will lead to a toxicity, and this will also use to, to alter or develop the nano samples f to make them uh, each time more nano compatible, and will be uh, see how the echo toxicology role is important and to have an understanding of the occupational pathologies. S sometimes you have uh, the nanoparticles that are not nanotoxicologies, uh, the to toxicities. So uh, we, uh, based on studies, uh, earlier studies, we made a new uh, new sample that are the albumine magnetic nanocapsules. We made this based on a ionized magnetic fluid that uh, ionized that was very susceptible to the uh, magnetic field because it uh, had a, a special answer. So we used this to promote the magnetohyperthermia to make systems of drug delivery. But this ionic uh, magnetic fluid is very toxic, so it should be worked to become biocompatible and to work as a drug delivery and promote magnetohyperthermia with a system of uh, agents delivery that promoted uh, photodynamic therapy. So, and making it in such a way that we can use this material to treat cancer. We made tests of toxicity, we made all the tests, and we saw that this material is highly biocompatible. The effects, the toxic effects, uh, disappear in few hours. In 48 hours, we did not observe any other significant effect. So, in a very interesting way, these nanoparticles, albumine uh, iron, made uh, a preferable destiny to the brain. So, we, we are capsuling uh, drugs that can promote this treatment in that place. We made tests with magnetohypothermia, uh, mo showing a considerable necrosis, and which is now being used for uh, studies of photodynamic uh, therapy, and with results are very important. The goal of making this study is for the study of new agents, photosensitive agents. Professor Tedesco showed us some uh, <coughs> use of the acid alinovolumenico, and we are putting in capsules, nanocapsules, other agents that are potentially more interesting. The results are being uh, being produced by uh, doctorate and PhD students uh, talking about the challenges that we still have in this nanotoxicology. Um, one of the things that we have in nan nanotoxicology is the adaptation of methodologies and of instruments. In the last years, we had a considerable progress, but some things are still should be developed in this sector. Uh, an another aspect would be the development of test platforms, uh, te nanotoxical tests. Professor Silvia showed, showed yesterday, yesterday an algorithm that can be used. And today, Dr. Uh, David showed a framework. And th there has been uh, a lot of work in this sense. But we, I think, believe we still need many nanotoxicological texts to be able to uh, reach, a, a, to be able to uh, foresee these the studies, uh, to avoid us to make all these uh, tests all the time. We need a regulamentation to, for the production and for the handling of these nanostructures. Uh, sometimes uh, students are throwing in the sink the rests, the, uh, the re residuals of this material. So we have to be very careful 
because it will go uh, into the draining system and and it can be very toxic so we have to pay a lot of attention uh, now so the scope of this conference the nanotoxicology has to contribute in the nanotechnologies uh, to assess the social impacts economical impacts of th this area and uh, uh, to calculate the risks and the benefits to, uh, that the so society and the environment. I put in a bigger letters the word benefits because I believe that we can have much more benefits than risks uh, if we can work with ethics, obeying all the regulations. I think that even before they exist, each one of us M must make their own, uh, pro each one his own regulation uh, to work to improve the quality of life. We work in a network involving uh, each time more uh, more uh, states in um, Brazil. I'm here in the University of. Brasilia, where we have a col collaboration with the University of Goiás. We also have a collaboration, important one, uh, with Professor Tedesco here of, of USP, Ribeirão Preto, uh, that gives us all the support, especially in the capsuling of the um, material. And we also have companies like that are located. So I hope that we are being able to incubate these companies in Brasilia be due to this difficulty of put placing our projects as the, the example of uh, oil, for example, if we had already uh, this uh, material, we could have the benefits of the use of it. it was, so I would like to thank the collaborators and to the students who uh, do all the work and to you for all for your attention thank you very much